Today we're going to test the step down transformer at 22 volts and 20 watts. The direct cable comes on at 22. We've got 250 primary into 30 secondary coming down in voltage eight times off the lens cable. The light's very bright. We come off that lens cable eight times down in voltage. We go through two resistors, 47 and 40. Stop excess current, 87 in total. Into the driver here of a MOSFET. That comes through a 10 ohm resistor. A 470 drain resistor here to keep the MOSFET as cool as possible. You have to minimize that resistor. With 1K, I took it to 470. There's the little 60 volt MOSFET. 1 ohm resistor here. 10 nanofarad capacitor there. Now what we're going to do is, and we're running it 530 kilohertz. Now what we're doing is we're going to leave it on for a few minutes and see if anything gets hot. Here we are after 10 minutes. Everything still seems to be working well. 23 volts, 20 watts coming through the primary. Secondary coils here. Through that big primary coil. The 10 nanofarad 440 volt resistor. Oscillating on a thousand secondary coil 0.71 wire. And that circuit comes here through a 1 ohm resistor into the MOSFET. The MOSFET's flipping on and off 530,000 times per second. We have a 470, very small, the minimal possible drain resistor to keep the MOSFET cool. Coming the other way, we've got a reverse diode, a 10 ohm resistor. This 1 ohm resistor also has a reverse diode to help get rid of spikes and stuff. Now the key part here, the MOSFET driver, we have 12 volts coming into that. And we come here through a 1K power supply into the driver. And there's the driver. And it comes back with the power supply like that. Now the output cable goes 10 ohms gate resistor to the MOSFET. The input cable is the bottom of the big tall secondary coil it's called the lens cable. We put it here so we don't want to touch the other thing. I put it on a piece of block. And we instead of coming directly into the MOSFET driver, which takes maybe one volt less, I put it through this step down transformer, 250 turns inside of 0.7 wire. 30 turns outside of 1.25 mil wire and that comes back out the output of that either blue cable comes back to these two very 50 watt resistors 47 and 40 87 in total back into the input of the MOSFET driver so we're reducing the voltage eight times and reducing the current by doing that now I just wanted to show you how much the input to the driver has been decreased this is or to burn myself. This is the straight lens cable which would burn out the driver immediately. And this is the voltage reduced lens cable. Eight times in voltage all the currents up. So we're taking eight times off the voltage there, there. And hopefully that will keep this little MOSFET driver safe. The MOSFET, this MOSFET is only 60 volts, cost about a few dollars, three dollars. This costs four dollars, so if we burn one out, it won't matter. So right now everything is going very well. The resistors are getting warm, but that's cool. I'll tell you why in a minute. The MOSFET is staying cool. It can go to 125 without breaking. It's probably like 30 or 40. The MOSFET itself can go to like 175. It's probably about 50C, 60C. And this resistor, which can take huge heat, is cool also. It's a bit warm, but it doesn't matter because the resistor can't break. So we'll give it another 20 minutes, see what happens. Here we are now after 30 minutes using our step-down transformer. Still at 23 volts, 0.9 amps, 20 watts. The direct lens cable is 22 volts. We'll only lose a volt on step-down. 12 volts going into the driver. Lights on quite brightly. Let's see what's hot. The resistors must be about 60 degrees C, which is good because I want to put a thermistor here to limit current. The MOSFET driver, certainly no more than 50 C, it's not getting hot yet. So stepping down the input cable from this directly down times 8 times in voltage to that has really cooled the driver quite a lot. Now we come over here through a 10 ohm resistor reverse diode and a 470k drain resistor to the MOSFET. There's a little MOSFET on a heat sink. See how hot it is. 
It's about 50 degrees C, but these things will take 175, maybe 60, 70, but they'll take 175. So I think at this 20 watts, the MOSFET's not going to blow out. We have a 1 ohm resistor here with a reverse diode. The primary cable comes around like that. There's a big 1,000 turn secondary coil 0.7 wire. We just attach here to refrigerator cable 6 turns and come into that coil. That gives you a step up from 6 to 1,000 volts times higher, like 20 times, it's about 3 or 4 kilovolts. And we put a little nanofarad, 10 nanofarad capacitor on it, high voltage to help it oscillate. You can put higher resistor here, 2 ohms if you want, it's not going to matter, there's some variations. So it looks like nothing's going to break and we can run this circuit all day at 20 watts. A lot of power, we certainly have enough power to do our experiments. Look at that. And we can come out of this out cable here. Don't touch this cable, because you'll get burned output cable you get burned if you do it just be careful when you get the speed you see if I put that lens cable here directly into that MOSFET driver it would just burn it out by dropping the voltage like that the MOSFET driver is more stable I could go down to 20 turns I guess and drop it even further we'll see so this experiment so far has succeeded running nicely at 20 volts 23 volts 20 watts a little MOSFET driver $4 a little 60 volt MOSFET, $3, easily replaceable, and we're on our way. Quick addendum, we can also do this with just 20 turns in the step down transformer. Now, and you've still got 23 volts and 20 watts. Now when you do this, be very careful on the primary current before it's stepped down. I just got the ship burned out of me coming nearer from wireless power, getting anywhere close to it. Look how powerful the signal is in the mains or coil. There's almost no voltage. We've gone down 12 times in voltage. So you're protecting the driver quite a lot. The driver wouldn't be stable without a step-down transformer. I used 30 turns before and now we've just got 20. So we've stepped down 12 times in voltage. We have to go from 22 volts to 23.4. But it's a long step-down. So dropping that voltage makes it much easier for these semiconductors to work. And I've had this on for about 10 minutes. They are getting a bit hot, but it's a lot better than burning out the drivers and these semiconductors by putting super high voltage in them. So 20 turns is okay too. 250 to 20 step down and roughly 100 ohms of 50 watt resistors and it works fine for 10-20 minutes. Today we're doing some very basic experiments on wireless power just to get started. I'm just putting on 12 volts and 5 watts through the main supply and 12 volts through this driver. This little MOSFET driver here with a 1K resistor. And that goes into this little tiny 60 volt MOSFET. And into this primary secondary coil with a capacitor on it. And there's a lens wire that comes out of that bottom of that coil into this step down transformer. 250 to 20 turns to step down the lens feedback through 87 ohms of 50 watt resistors feed back, back into the MOSFET driver so we get a resonant signal. Now, from the very top of the Tesla coil, I've got another wire coming down like that. The bottom's the feedback wire lens. The top wire is the green one. I put it green so you can see it. And we bring it all the way over here, a big 15 amp wire, just so there's no resistance. And I've taken it over here over a speaker magnet a couple pieces of wood and a sheet of aluminium. Now what you want to see is, is the wireless power being transferred well to it? And we can see, yes it is. Let's just see how far the wireless power comes off this coil. Versus around the sheet of aluminium. You see that speaker wire is basically lit up the whole way along. Wireless energy is just coming out of it the whole way along through the insulation and we get over to this aluminium plate and it spreads out and gets over the whole aluminium plate like that so it's a very so it does go through the wire wirelessly but we can spread it out with a small aluminium plate and it seems to go all the way up the look at this it seems to go all the way up this aluminium rod in the center 
So to make this special kind of wireless power work, which is very simple, we just need a green lead from the top of the Tesla coil and a piece of aluminium. And you see there's wireless power coming out all the top of it. I put a plastic there so no current flows directly. And we just put an ordinary coil on top of it like that. You can see how much amps we get. Current will flow through it here at about 3 amps. That's what's happening. This is a very easy way to transmit power. Just have green wire aluminium and put a coil on top of it. It can be a huge distance like all the way across the room. And that's how it works. We're only putting in 12 volts and 5 watts. Very easy way to transmit wireless electricity. Today we're going to continue our studies of induct transfer of wireless power using this solid state Tesla coil and two little power supplies and an aluminum plate with a green wire. And you can see that power from that coil is coming way over to this aluminum plate here. There's green wire that runs all the way over here off the coil and it's generated by these two little power supplies. It's about 500 kilohertz. I've got 11 volts and 5 watts. I'm not going to explain how this works because I've done it in previous videos. Basically it comes through this green wire from the top of the coil. Now what I'm doing is you can see a lot of power is coming through. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a coil on top of it. A simple 800 turn 0.5 millimeter wire coil. On top of this sheet aluminium with a little plastic sheet so nothing goes through. You can see it's still coming through. Now what I'm going to do next is, do we need one wire coming off the coil or two, red and black or just red or black to get power out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach a lead to red and we look at the multimeter and we can see we have about 0.2 volts. Let's turn it up just a little bit more. Here we have 0.23 volts coming out of it. AC at 4.9 watts up just a little bit more and here we have 0.8 volts AC coming out of it at 6 watts so we're coming just off one lead here we don't have to use two leads if we come over here and go to the other lead we have about one volt AC coming off of it at 6 watts it may be a little bit different the main thing is that single wire electricity now we can also switch to watts and see how much current's coming off that. I want to blow the multimeter. Go to 10 amps. We've got about 2.4 amps AC coming off of it. Just off that black lead, not the red. We've got 5 volts. This multimeter, that's all it can take. If it's a little bit higher, it breaks. If we switch from there to the red lead, if the red lead is single wire electricity. We've got one amp coming off of it at about the same voltage. So the major point is it's single wire electricity. We only need one lead to collect the power. And the reason is because the frequency is so high. This thing is running at 412 kilohertz. The duty cycle is 51%, which is almost pure AC. The multimeter doesn't really like these high conditions. And 411 kilohertz. So let's do that with another coil just to be sure. Okay, here we're doing it with another coil to be sure, 1.25 millimeter wire, about 300 turns. We just hooked up to the red wire. I had to turn the power down to like 4 watts because the multimeter was blowing out. And you can see we're getting 2.3 AC amps coming out of it just through one wire. We don't have to go through two wires. If we switch to voltage, it wants to blow out this thing. If we switch to voltage, we're getting about... 0.6 volts AC. So the main thing is this is single wire electricity. We don't need two wires. If we go to kilohertz, we've got 404 kilohertz. We go duty cycle, we got 49%, so it's almost a pure AC wave. So this in summary, whatever coil we use, coils with higher capacitance drain a little power, but they all work. This Tesla coil through that green wire coming around here will transfer wireless electricity into it like that and to get the wireless electricity out 
we only have to come through one of the leads, not the other. It's wireless electricity, single wire when we come out. And that's very important because if it's not a wire coil like a spinning disc, if we wanted to collect power or add power, we might just be able to do it the axle and not the outside so we don't have to use brushes. That's like Gravaflyer did. Maybe all we have to do is put apply power single wire to the axle because it's very hard to go to the outside. You have to get brushes or sparks or something. So having single wire electricity here may be quite critical and we'll see what we can do with it next. Thank you very much.